A really big update on 40k's game balance today. Games Workshop have been more open than ever before about their systems for changing things. They've shown off 40k faction win rates, confirmed the balance data slate happens within the month, and basically told us which factions are going to get adjustments. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about Games Workshop's rather nice balance update article that they've just shared on Warhammer Community. The article is one of the latest ones in their Meta Watch service, and it basically seems to be the 40k counterpart of the Age of Sigmar one that they did the other week, talking about their philosophies for rebalancing the game, what sort of things they try and take into account, and a rough win percentage ranking from various factions at tournaments, highlighting which armies they consider to be the most problematic, and which armies they think are the weakest at the moment. Above and beyond that though, they shared really quite a lot of thoughts as to what sort of things go into making 40k balance changes. Not only did they have an article written in the text, but they also had a designer's interview as well, which was quite nice and refreshingly open, talking about all the different challenges that come in with balancing 40k's game rules, and roughly what they try and aim for and why. Definitely worth checking out for yourself. In this video, I'll just make a quick summary of the main points they covered in the interview, and then take a look at their stats, and which factions are likely to be getting buffed and nerfed. First up in the interview, they led by talking about the meta, where basically in 40k you have a whole load of armies interacting with each other, some might counter other ones, and as one thing gets strong, things that try and counter it will probably get better as well. They use the analogy of rock, paper, scissors for there always being a counter out there. It does mean that things can be often a little bit more complicated than just buffing the bottom factions and nerfing the top ones, though obviously that is a pretty decent place to start. They also talked about the idea that rebalancing based on tournament stats generally does help people at all levels of play. That's certainly something that I've seen a little bit of debate on lately. I'd argue that broadly it is generally true. It means that more factions are likely to have a fighting chance against each other. But sometimes it can frustrate people, say if one thing's just doing great at tournaments and then it gets nerfed, and maybe that was one of the things that they were relying on for strength for their army. You can see how it might cause some bad feelings. I personally prefer them to make these changes to 40k and accept some changes to armies for general balance of the game overall, though I guess it's nice that they acknowledge that it might also cause some negatives as well as positives. Again with the Age of Sigma article, they basically said that the target was to balance 40k around a 45-55% win rate, essentially 50% with an error rating of 5, and to do so they'll generally look at the apps and data from tournaments, usually over the last 50 to 100 days. At the moment they're generally looking at most of the data within Nephilim, but occasionally that's not always going to be the most relevant way to do things. Say for example if they had loads of codexes released all at once, it might mean that the data from early in their season might not be quite as relevant as their data later on. Again, seems a pretty reasonable way of doing things. I have a feeling that in the past they weren't quite as smart with this, and often factions took a little bit of extra flack due to past performance as opposed to the performance right now. Next up, they touched on their balance tools, the things that they can change to try and get the armies within that 45-55% to 55 ratio. Broadly speaking, it's basically just chapter approved points changes in the Munitorum Field Handbook and the rules changes that come in the balance data slate. Both of those have their positives and negatives, they did specifically say that they try and make the minimum amount of changes as possible to not confuse people and have the entire game change every few months. Again, something that they have been getting at least a little bit of criticism for, and they acknowledge there are some trade-offs with that, say for people who only get a few games in every month or so. For nerfing things, they generally prefer to do something precision and targeted, maybe if there's just one pretty overpowered combo that's making one unit too much in an army, and that's what's sending the faction over the edge. They'd rather just take out one bit of that, rather than nerfing three or four different things wholesale. I guess maybe that was what they were trying to do with the judgement token change, so it no longer auto wounds on sixes, but they did also apply a bit of a general purpose hammer to the leagues of Votan as well, which they say they only do when things get very out of line. I guess they've certainly taken that approach in the past at least a couple of times, with big hits to things like Tyranids and Admech when they were in their heyday. They also mentioned that the free to download points from the Munitorum Field Manual now does seem to be another positive development. The points changes that they made just before Nephilim were really quite good I thought, and really tailored to what was actually happening at the moment, compared with the printed one six months before, which seemed like they were just far out of date, and wound up basically hurting game balance probably as much as it did help it. Say for example Death Guards getting major nerfs despite not really being all that strong in the current meta. That's definitely a positive, it's really quite good to see them reinforcing it as that, as it probably means that they'll continue to do those free to download point systems, something that I think is very positive for 40k balance changes. Another interesting detail was that they're apparently getting more sophisticated with calculating damage output per point and doing so versus different targets. I feel that is something that has been a bit more apparent in their current codexes, 
Back in 8th edition, you'd often have tanks with gun options that were just flatly worse or better than each other against literally everything. At least in 9th edition codexes, the anti-tank weapons are generally better against the tanks, and the anti-infantry weapons better against the infantry, and it's a bit more of a choice as to which sort of targets you want to kill, even if often one of the guns does still wind up being better. At least in 9th edition, you don't usually just get one gun that's massively flatly superior, at least for the majority of units. Otherwise, a couple of other interesting areas that they touched on were the Leagues of Votan. They didn't really talk too much about that apology video that they made the other week, and the fact that they were nerfing them, but they said that with the balance changes, they were hoping that they'll wind up somewhere in the middle of the pack, and it'd be very unlikely that they'd look at any sort of further balance changes until the full army is out, and it's had a decent amount of time to get played at tournaments to get some proper data. This seems pretty reasonable to me. My guess at this point is that they'll probably wind up somewhere within that 45-55% to win bracket. How far up it though, I'm not 100% sure. But I guess if they're slightly above or slightly below, they'd make further changes to knock them back into the midfield. When talking over their win rate stats, they talked about a couple of other interesting things as well. They did talk about some of the limitations with tournament win rates. Say for example, having some armies that have fairly low win rates but still do great at tournaments. Maybe armies that are a little bit more tricky to play straight away, but once they're mastered, they get really good. I might say that Tau might be one of those at the moment. Their win rate's kind of middling, but it seems they've got far more tournament wins than most of the other contenders in the midfield. Maybe due to the challenge of needing to advance and score points, but without overexposing or losing their crucial damage dealing battle suits. Otherwise, they did mention that some armies were more sort of gatekeeper armies. High win rates, but struggle to actually win at the top of events. I'd say perhaps maybe Adeptus Custodes might be that currently. They're really not doing too bad in terms of tournament wins, but not a lot of top podium success. I guess it's good to know that they're keeping those in mind. I guess it does make it a bit of a quandary for them whether or not they try and balance around top levels of play, or the more general player base though. Finally, they did also touch briefly on internal balances for codexes. They said that they generally want to have multiple playable strong lists per faction, rather than just one obvious one. That definitely seems to be a bit of an issue with some factions currently. Maybe Necrons taking that objective secured pre-game move dynasty plus the Silent King. That does seem to be how just about every Necron list starts. Or perhaps Bloody Rose Sisters of Battle packing large amounts of Zephyrim or Repentia. Whether or not that's something to actually warrant rules changes though is another thing. But if it is certain sub-faction rules that are either overtuned or underpowered, it might seem a bit hard to change it with points. Finally, and perhaps the most interesting out of all the bits that they discussed, is this table of win results, which seems to be the one that Games Workshop is going to be basing any balance updates for for 40k. At the moment, at least by their measure, it looks like just about everything is within that 55-45% to bracket, with quite a few things clustered towards the top and towards the bottom of that. I think people might not have been too surprised that it still seems to be Tyranids and Harlequins sitting at the top. They've both been doing absolutely great in Nephilim. It is pretty crazy that they're still doing quite so well, despite the broad battery of nerfs that Games Workshop levelled at them since their codexes came out. They basically confirmed that unless anything major changes in the next week or so, it almost certainly will be some sort of nerfs for the Tyranids and the Harlequins in the balanced later slates. Though apparently it seems that by their own methodology, Sisters and Necrons might escape any other attention from the time being. Otherwise, towards the top of the table, it's kind of interesting to see Inari out there as well. They have been doing well enough, but it seems hard to argue that they've been causing any real problems, to be honest. They do seem to be played in very small numbers. Otherwise, it seems to be a particularly strong showing for the Chaos Demons, up to 54%. I feel that's been climbing a little bit since their codex came out. Otherwise, I'd say most of the rest of the top section is really quite expected. Maybe Custodia's just a bit unusually high given lack of top tournament success, but they still seem to challenge people well in the midfield. Otherwise, down at the bottom of the list are factions that Games Workshop are near enough guaranteed to buff. By their own measurement, both Space Marines and Admech sit on 39% win percentages, and hopefully would get some sort of rules boost in the balanced data slate. Admech really isn't much of a surprise, to be honest, how they've been going on. Though I find it a little bit weird that they decided to include Death Watch within the Adeptus Astartes if they separated out all the other Divergent chapters. They really do operate quite differently with their kill teams and unique units. Still though, Death Watch have generally been having a pretty rough time of it lately. Boss to them certainly wouldn't hurt. Kind of interesting to think what else they might do for Space Marines, seeing as they've already given them quite a broad brush boost with the Armour of Contempt particularly as a lot of boost to the core book might just help out the more divergent chapters just as much or more. Otherwise, and surprisingly high on this list, are Astra Militarum, which they seem to have pegged at a 45%. It seems a little bit on the weirdly higher side, a little bit higher than the other sources that have them more down at, say, 42 or 40. I guess it might be due to including a bunch of data from smaller tournaments or something. 
To be honest though, I'm not sure it really matters either way whether or not they're really helping out the guard right now. They're going to have a new codex very, very soon in the future, so as with demons shortly before they released, any balance changes that they decide to make for the guard might be a bit short-lived. Again, they did mention a few things about player numbers and the types of players that play armies, saying that there might be, say, a little bit of dilution effect from a lot of newer players who like to play space marines, and maybe a bit of an opposite type effect to that for people who play harlequins, perhaps slightly more skilled or tournament-focused players, happy to play an army with very few units but some interesting mobility and stratagem tricks, both of which could theoretically impact these win rates a bit. Finally, they wound up by concluding that the next balanced data slate will be due out within the month, and I think in the video they also mentioned that it will be weeks away, so it doesn't look like it's dropping this week or even potentially next week, we might still have a little bit longer to wait. I think it's always a little bit of a frustrating time, not knowing exactly when it's going to drop, but knowing it's coming soon, as it's maybe a bit demotivating for theory crafting for the top or bottom factions that might well get changes. Though if they are basing changes off this data, I guess it would imply that the vast majority of armies aren't going to be changed massively. So I guess you could rest easy if you're most of the other factions on the list. In any case, really quite an interesting and detailed breakdown of 40k stats from Games Workshop. Really good to see them being a bit more open about their methodology, and the vast majority of what they've been saying makes a lot of sense to me. Good to see them catching up with some community desires and things, though I must admit it must be a bit of a thankless task trying to rebalance 40k. Quite a lot of the player base are going to be wanting different things, but it certainly seems to be a really good start to get most of the armies somewhat competitive against each other, and hopefully retain the state of 40k being somewhat balanced and interesting, compared with a lot of the edition where it's just been the latest codex wins full stop. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll certainly be covering the balanced data slate changes here on the channel, so feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see that. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's how we can afford to keep on making quite so many videos like this quite so often. If you are enjoying a lot, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.